93.7 WABC. Woo! The police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga ain't got it back because I'm brown. And not the other color, so police think they have the authority to kill a minority. No, that is because I ain't the one for a punk motherfucker with a badge and a gun to be keeping on. And so in jail, we can go toe to toe in the middle of a cell. We come with me because you know where we're going this morning. Good. Wednesday morning, everybody, 10.08, back yeah. on the Bernie and Sid Show right here on Legendary 77 WABC on what looks like to be at least the last day of summer, at least temperature-wise. We'll be back in the uh, mid to low 70s the next couple of weeks, and before you know it, it'll be hot and scarf time, but today's going to be hot, and it's going to be hot right here inside the studio. Hat Real and, hot. Hat and scarf time? Oh, that's you're, you're a couple hat, of weeks scarf, away. and mittens. A couple of weeks away, bro. You know that, but you not You sound today. like Joan Hamburg, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Hat and scarf time. Oh, it's coming. Good Lord. It is coming. Are you wearing skinny jeans today again? I am not. I'm wearing shorts. The way shorts. you're talking. I already went to Woodbury Commons last week and bought all my winter stuff for me and the kids. You know, I'm not supposed to be chiming in here, but I'm looking here. It's Sunday, 82 degrees. Yeah. Monday, 81. Tuesday, Freezing. 84. Wednesday, uh, yeah. 84. Come Thursday, on. 81. And Friday, what 82. Happened? What happened to the, the mid-70s? Sid Rosenberg show. Look at this, bro. Take it's it all in the 80s from the whole next week. First of all, that is the worst application ever. That's not even the weather channel. Look, it's app Brooklyn, bro. It's Brooklyn <laughs> weather. Not New York. That's right. Brooklyn, Where New York. Where I happen to live, I do live in Brooklyn, as you do, right? Hello, I'm Sid Rosenberg. I'm <laughs> filling in for Arthur Idala here on the, uh, <laughs> on the Bernie Dirt and Sid show. show. <laughs> Arthur Idala is here. By the way, you look, married man now, you look like a million bucks. You really do. Bucks. You look great. Well, I'm not worth a million bucks. Uh, I may have debt in the amount of a million bucks, but I feel great. I am... I'm married like a hundred and something days, but most importantly, I'm like four weeks away from being a dad again. Congratulations. Wow. Which, I mean, my feet are not on the ground. Yeah. I, I, you guys are cut from the same cloth. We love what we do. We love our jobs. We yeah. love being in the mix, but there's nothing like being a father. No, like, no. That's, nah. That is the greatest the greatest gift that God has ever given. Except the newborn stage sucks. Yeah. Well, well you, you got... know, she's looking at breastfeed, so that kind of gets me off the hook for at least you, three or you four are months. The, you are the kid. <laughs> Yeah, right. Hey, the way she's looking, man, I would go 50-50. I'll split oh. it up. It's, my, it's a son. So That's know. right. <laughs> Two for the price of one. Well. Hey, but you do look, uh, the, the suits, did the Fox News pay for your suits? Or? Uh, well, I, that is on a need-to-know basis. Okay. That is none of your the business. Part, it's in the portion of my contract that it says I, confidential. I well. guess we won't be answering any <laughs> questions about Roger Rails then. No, <laughs> I think we're going to tell us gonna, about your suits. I'm going to tell, uh, tell myself what I tell my clients. Take the fifth. Right. Just take the fifth. Take the fifth. <laughs> Call the prosecutor. Yeah, he won't be answering any questions. He's taking, but he's a priest, Arthur. Yeah, he's taking the fifth. He's taking the fifth. <laughs> so it is Arthur Idala, noted legal, uh, attorney here in uh, New York City and Fox News uh, legal analyst, I should say. Well, I no, but I, I always pride myself as being a lawyer first. That's Be, that's my right. number one thing. That's I'm a, a lawyer. Because well, who do you represent? You, are you a criminal law? Or uh, we do. Uh, we kind of do everything. Yes. The, the criminal law, as you guys know, is what gets you in the newspaper, right? right? So, yep. But but the, the stuff where we help a lot of people is, you know, Bernie, I call it like neighborhood law. I, I represent individuals. I don't really represent companies. So... God bless, you know, you and your family are buying a big house, or Sid now has all of this money, so he needs to do estate planning, what? or you guys are going to put together and have the Bernie and Sid hamburger, and you need to trademark it, and so we do all, you do all, all, that. Know, all so, of that. So stuff. let's then start with this, because obviously Colin Kaepernick is a huge story, and all the, bl- <laughs> the police brutality is all that. Uh, locally, uh, you were there a couple of months ago, right after the guy was gunned down in his backyard, the, one of the owners of Spumoni Gardens. Any That's movement big- on that case? Well, I'm going to tell you, the, the, the short answer to that question is no uh, that I know of. I do represent... They did have a video of the guy, though, didn't they? I do represent the family. Um, I... What I can say is there have been no arrests that are made. The um, investigators who are investigating it are leaving no stone unturned. Um, And I'm hopeful that... What's the September? By the end of the month, I'm hopeful that there will be an arrest that is made. But I'll tell you, Sid, in the day of where everyone's got a camera everywhere... Yeah. there's really not that much there. There's there's video of someone there right before and right after, but there's you know where the feds are handling this. And when the feds have a case, they want a hundred percent certainty sure. before sure. they put handcuffs on anybody. They right. that you know there's a reason they have a ninety eight percent conviction rate because they don't arrest anyone until they got them nailed. 
So, but I, I'm hopeful. It, it, that, that's a tragic thing. That was the first homicide to take place in that neighborhood in Brooklyn in two years. In a long time. Now, the other local case, of course, that everybody's taken personal in Queens and Howard Beach, the Vitrano oh girl. God. Now, Curtis Lewa tells me today that they've got somebody. They think they have found somebody who kind of matches the sketch of really? the quote-unquote eyewitness. But you would agree, Arthur, that this has become a very personal thing for all of us New Yorkers. Well, because there before the grace of God go I. I mean, but look, let's talk about our buddy Curtis. You know, Curtis was the one pounding his chest when the L.A.B. Spirotti Garden thing happened that it was an organized crime thing. I can tell you from all of the information that I've gotten, organized crime has been ruled out on, on very many levels. So the well, fact that they, they left the money there and all that right, stuff. Right. The fact that a businessman is coming home and he's literally ten feet away from his wife, who has dinner on the table, and his two uh, sons uh, in their early twenties are right there, and he's killed, he's executed. The fact that a young woman in Howard Beach, these are two family-oriented, long-standing, hardcore New York neighborhoods. She goes jogging and, and she winds up in the condition, the horrific condition she's in, is scary. It it what is it harken back to? 1978, yes. 1979, yeah. 19, so and and neither one of them have been solved in an era where let's face it god bless law enforcement they're solving cases faster and faster than they ever have so to have those two examples one in brooklyn one in queens hanging out there it it, it doesn't uh, foster a feeling of confidence and when, when's the new police commissioner to start uh, uh this friday sometime this month oh yeah friday. no this okay. friday right, right, uh, right. tomorrow is uh Police Commissioner Bratton's last day, and God bless him. No, I was good, with him good being... riddance to him. <laughs> well, all right. Get him out. Uh, well, that, he, he, went proved, out. He, he, he really sold his soul, and it turned you, out to be you, a skunk. You and I feel a little differently about yes. this. And statistically speaking, uh, I'm on the right side of this, and you're on the wrong side of this, if you want to look at robberies and burglaries. No, no, and I know like that, that, but he sullied his reputation at the end. Now he's going to work for the Clintons as as Hillary Clinton uh, trashes police in an effort to pander for, for votes trashes them as racist, and he defends her. He gives her cover by meeting with her. So the, the hell with him. And Is he also, really going to go work for the Clintons? Yeah, he's, well, he's, well, he's working, working for a firm, a firm that, right. that's connected. Buddies with Bill Clinton. Yeah. Very, very right. close. Right. Well, everybody's buddies. Yeah, it's it's very shady. Right. <laughs> very shady. <laughs> right, right. But listen, Arthur Idal, you're the consummate New York attorney. You went to SUNY Purchase. Yep. Then you went to CUNY, CUNY, CUNY Law School. School. I was there last sake. night. They just installed a new dean. And I got to tell you, buddy, I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of my... And, and before that, I went to... There was only one little blip that I had with Sid. I went, to, I went to public school. I went to public grammar school, public college, and, and public law school. In the middle, Sid and I popped into popped in and out of poly, poly prep. prep. Yeah, I happened to graduate. Someone else didn't, but we'll talk about that another I time. I had to go to Yeshiva. Corrupted <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, by Italians. Right, you, you're right. There were a lot of Italians around. <laughs> but so it's an amazing story. I mean, you, 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 though these are not. Uh, it's, it's not Harvard. It's not. Uh, no, no, no. You know, and, and I'll tell you when I, I I'll name drop for a second. When I spoke to my, I called him my uncle now, Justice Scalia. And he was pushing me, you know, you got to have more kids, you have to have more kids. And I said to him, you know, you're on it because he had nine kids and 36 grandkids. I said, you're on, you know, these kids cost a lot of money. He goes, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> He's, I go, well, just college. He goes, where'd you go to college? Because he knew. I said, so did so he purchase? He goes, how much did that cost? I go, $5,000 <laughs> a squat. So he goes, your kids can go to public schools and public schools. And, and he goes, you didn't turn out so bad for a knucklehead. So... Yeah, I'm Which very is, proud of, uh, of our education system. And, and the fact that CUNY Law School, I found that last night, is the number one most diverse law school in the United States of America on all levels. Age, they have a lot of people there. It's their second career. They're going to law school yeah. at 50 years old. And, you know, the, 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 all the diversity. Of course, I went into a bathroom yesterday at the new law school, which is a beautiful building. And it's like this whole, this is the transgender room, and this is the oh, gender boy, neutral great. room, yeah, and this boy. is the... And they sell like every, what, whatever. It's, it's a different world than. than <laughs> Let you me know. point out another uh, consummate New Yorker, Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Yes. She went to uh, a k- parochial schools, Catholic schools here in New York City, which I think made the difference in her life because uh, you know these cities in, in, in the South Bronx. So she was my neighbor in the in, in the projects. And I don't think she would have uh, ascended to the Supreme Court had she gone to public schools myself. I will tell you, she's <laughs> – I'm not sure about that, only because she's got a brain that's a little different than the rest of ours. Like, yeah, you put but, all three of our brains together. But you don't and, channel that uh, properly. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. But I think she also goes to the story of, of like, a Bill Clinton whose, you know, father was an alcoholic and beat the heck out of him and, and, he be, and his mom, and he became president of the United States. And, look, she didn't grow up in a nice neighborhood, right? She didn't not grow up no, with a silver spoon. 
Bronxdale houses in the South Bronx there, and then Co-op City. And, but she did have parents who loved her and and took the time and spent the money to put her into Catholic schools, and that, I think that made the difference. For I, her. I will tell you, my father will tell you it made the difference for him when he was growing up in the Bronx. So, he was in the Pelham Bay section, and he was cutting up big time. And my my grandfather pulled him out and put him into Fordham Prep. And those priests, man, they whipped his butt whipped into shape real, real quick. <laughs> so what made you want? Were you watching Perry Mason? I mean, why? Well, my dad's Lord? look. He, Perry he, Mason. He, what he, generation? Truth, nah, truth. How about L.A. Law? Truth be told, <laughs> is uh, my father is, is was a very is is a very prestigious attorney, and ah, so that was going on in okay. my household. But I went through that whole rebellion phase. And Sid can understand. I, I'm not going to do what my dad's going to do, and I really wanted to be an entertainer. At Poly Prep, I won the acting award. Is that right? I went to SUNY Purchase to go to acting <laughs> school. You, you could've. Yeah, I was the music man in the music man. They did the music man so I could sing uh, sure. the Harold Hill 76 <laughs> trombone. <laughs> uh, you could play the life of Yul Brenner or, but you know what it was? or yeah, Telly Savalas. I, either one. But um, you know what it was, Bernie? I didn't want to go to work. Like, college was ending. And I'm like, I don't, oh don't want to go to work. What right. am I going to do? And, right. and I took the LSAT and I got into CUNY Law School. And then I was lucky enough that, that Brooklyn DA Joe Hines, I met him on a bar stool and he knew yeah. my dad. And he had already rejected me from his office on papers, but when he met me over a pint of Bass Ale, he said, uh, he goes, hey, you want to come work for me or what? I was like, really? I don't know you work for Joe. You work for Joe. Oh, wow. yeah. That was wow. the greatest okay. experience of my life. Wow. He's a great guy. Another yeah. guy getting a yeah. bad rap. He's yeah. getting a bad yeah. rap. And why is he getting a bad rap? Because of the Hasidic community. Apparently, he, he, he turned the other way uh, in the face of some of these ch- well, child it, abuse scandals. It depends who you talk to. Because oh. if you talk to the Hasidic community... I mean, I had a couple of cases where the sentences that they asked for were insane. They were more than if you commit murder. Because the way the, the penal law is, you commit murder, the most you can get is 25 to life. Now, you could spend life, but you're eligible for parole. They were, Hines was having people sentenced to 100 <laughs> years, well, I would, my, which I means you've got to do 75 Can, can I just years. say, raping kids is pretty uh, no, egregious. Love, it's worse than murder, I mean, It's I pretty think. terrible. But, it's worse than murder. But a lot of it wasn't rape. A lot of it, I'm not... I am not justifying it, but it was just touching hand to oh, pop, pop, oh I don't know about a hundred years. It was, it was years. just no. I know it sounds it, worse than that. I, I mean, I, a, I, a murderer I, is getting twenty five years, and, you. and a toucher is getting a hundred. No years. pun intended. I feel you. Right. I, I see what you're saying. And by the way, don't don't forget Bernard that he is a defense attorney. Well, uh, hold on. But I'm, a, I'm a, number one. I'm a recovering prosecutor. Number two, I'm a huge I'm a huge advocate of law enforcement. You know what? Let me give a quick plug. Uh, tomorrow is um, the Rafael Ramos Foundation uh, event. Rafael Ramos, uh, Ramos and Lou were the two cops who were executed in their car. Sure. And the Ramos fa- uh, family approached me about a year ago and asked if I would help them set up a foundation, which, my, of course, my law firm did all pro bono. And this is what they're doing tomorrow. And I, I compliment Ra- Mr. Uh, Detective Ramos's wife so much, Maritza. She um, raised the money. We had a fundraiser. She raised not a lot of money, but enough we're giving out 500 backpacks tomorrow to kids in a very rough school in Bed-Stuy, three or four blocks away from where the two police officers were executed. And there's going to be like 40 cops, the mounted cops, the, the canine cops. And the whole idea behind it, Bernie, is to give the kids, these f- third, fourth, and fifth graders, the interaction with police officers at a young age so uh, who are giving them a present. <laughs> How you going? That's I'm a not, cop. Yeah. Here's your backpack with right. all your school supplies Fantastic. in it for the whole year so that this whole thing about – remember when Mayor de Blasio said, well, I told my son when you're a police sure. officer oh, approaches despicable, you, despicable. you better you – know, you know, we're trying to eliminate that. We want it to be when a kid sees a police officer, he says, hi, officer, how are you? How was your day today? Right, right, or right. if you need some help. Or, Love it. Uh, you know, so, Love it. So the so, Ramos Foundation is doing some real good stuff. So even beautiful. though I'm a defense attorney, I'm doing a lot of that good things. That is beautiful. That is good stuff. Arthur Idala, the noted New York attorney and Fox News what le- legal with, analyst. What do we do with football players that don't stand for the national anthem? We're going to we're gonna talk that. about oh, Colin yeah. Kaepernick and, and that lightweight Eric Schneiderman t- taking oh. on Donald Trump. And also, you, you, you once represented Lawrence Taylor as well. I still I spoke to him last night. Uh, we're going to talk to man. Arthur Idala about all this coming up on the Bernie and Sid Show. 1-800-848-9222. Back after this. 77 WAB. I feel very, 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 very good about it. When I heard that she was captured, I'm, I'm going to go get me a bottle of Bacardi rum and get drunk. Yeah. Back on Bernie and Sid on 77 WABC with noted attorney Arthur Idala. That was the woman in the wheelchair up in the Bronx who had her purse snatched 
They caught the uh, woman who snatched the purse, yeah. and she's getting a bottle of Bacardi, baby. Now, how about that? As this city <laughs> continues to slide into disarray, uh, with uh, old ladies getting robbed in daylight, bums masturbating on the street, bums yeah. with with uh, with the computers, computers, God, and, and you uh, guys crack read, pipes. Speaking of masturbation, because I know that's a great topic for Sid. Right? Um, <laughs> did you read this thing about what the graham cracker and how the graham cracker was created in the 1800s by a guy named Graham? Right. Uh, who was a priest? He was. Uh, uh, you know, one of these puritarian guys. And instead of touching yourself, you were supposed to eat the cracker, and that was supposed to, like, cleanse your soul. It was in the, the wait, newspaper. Wait, I thought, I saw it. wait, wait yeah. you're telling me they created graham crackers as a way to reduce masturbation. Yeah, that's basically what the uh, the esteemed New York Post so, is reporting. You know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to masturbate and eat a graham cracker at the same time. <laughs> and tweet that. That's a, <laughs> lot, that's a lot of information you're putting out of these 50,000 powerful watts over here he's in gonna uh, make New York City. He's, he's going to make s'mores. <laughs> oh! You got it. That, there's the line. Wow. There's the line. Wow. I'm going back to court. It's now, a lot more. It's a lot wait, cleaner there. But if, in fact, I do this in public. And then uh, you're in trouble. And I get busted. And I come to Arthur Idala's firm. Would you laugh me out of your office? No. I would me? say, Sid, I know you're so long. How many more shit jams are going to get you out of here? No. the fifth. You know, you're in trouble. It's, it's uh, Especially if there's any kids around. and You're endangering the welfare of a child. It's public right. and, and decent. But, but how do you get the guy off? Oh, see what I just said there? Oh. <laughs> That's not my, my job. It's up to your wife. <laughs> we probably would get you fine and, you know, just That's a it? slap on the wrist. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. As long well, as nobody really the guy, gets The guy hurt. can't help himself. The well, guy... I mean, there are people out there who are actually, truly are, are addicted. They have addicted personalities, sure. and, and they need treatment, and they should go yeah, to treatment. That's, that's a bunch of crap. About <laughs> Listen, man, addiction. I mean, I mean, look, you know, you brought up Lawrence Taylor. The, the man needs to be satiated. I mean, I, he, you know, does. So he, he does. He <laughs> does. <laughs> you know, you think, what do you think? Let I, him I go. Need, he's got extra testosterone. It's, it's I a, need to be satiated. I love cocaine. I don't do either one of them. I really? Mean, right. I mean, if I want, everybody loves it. You, uh, you, burn you, on, you just I, stop. I, you don't just have stop. to really make all these admissions. You know, I mean, Sid has learned his lesson no, about I mean, keeping his I, I mouth shut. I don't do any of it. So what I'm well, saying is you exercise discipline well, and you stop doing there it. There is a legal assumption that for you to be able to make the statement, I love cocaine, there had to have been some sort of... Uh, you should in the show, past. I, look, I, I sure. just say I like coffee, so the, the logical progression would, would oh, be that I, I like cocaine. Great defense, you're hired. You're not me. You want part-time work at I Dollar per tuner in Cammons, or you want full-time work? <laughs> yeah, it's a great defense. So listen, we have some tape of Colin Kaepernick after the Monday Night Football game. We're going to play that and get... Uh, Arthur Idala's take on the whole Colin Kaepernick taking a knee during the National Anthem stuff after Gnome with the news. 77 WABC News Now. And we're asking the question, do these men in blue deserve overtime? 77 Sunny. Here's the story she'll be talking about. 77 WABC. Bernie and Sid on demand. You never know what's going to happen. The WABC radio app. Download it now. Upload the BS. 77 WABC. How you doing? This is Lawrence Taylor from New York Giants. You're listening to Bernie and Sid Show, 77 WABC. I will treat her with great respect unless she treats me, you know, in a certain manner, in which case uh, that will be the end of that. All right, that's uh, LT, our boy LT, who, of course, is represented by the great Arthur Ike Donald, live in studio today, and Donald Trump. So before we get to Colin Kaepernick and the issue at hand that everybody's talking about, in fact, I received a very nice text from Mike Tannenbaum, who runs the Dolphins. He used to run the Jets, because I, I texted him. I said, Mike, I love you. What your players did in Seattle was despicable. I can't tell you what he texted, but he, he didn't disagree. And he said, one day we'll talk. So it just leads to show you that they can't do anything about this. Between the players' union, the NFL, even the GMs and the team presidents, their hands are tied. But before we get to that, Trump University, that is a legal battle right now. I've seen basically what they said Donald Trump University did, some of the wrongdoings. And even me, a guy very critical of Donald Trump, I don't like him even a little. This looks like a witch hunt to me. Now you're the attorney. You and, tell and, me. And it's even a, they're even they're expanding the witch hunt because now they're looking into his charitable foundation. And I will tell you guys, that is a, a trickier road to hoe because you know foundations are, are tax free, right? So right. and it you know it's a way to you hypothetically you have a huge event at the Waldorf. They don't collect the taxes if you have that tax free certificate. So they're very very critical of is it. Really a not for profit or, or is it just a, a ruse? So, and the laws are pretty specific, but pretty treacherous. So 
Schneiderman, it's no secret, wants to be the next governor. Uh, he's the attorney general. Uh, the Yes, the attorney general of the state of New York. Right. Democrat. I'm not a big fan of his, personally, because I think he's a little more opportunistic than he should be. But that seems to be the... That seems to be the mold. So that, not only that, it maybe. started with Spitzer. He was the uh, he was the opportunistic attorney general. It went to Andrew Cuomo. He was the opportunistic attorney general. They both became the governor. So you know he's following the the the, the path that they led. But you know it's another thing that Trump has to deal with. Obviously he doesn't deal with this himself. His lawyers deal with it. And if they're smart as Trump lawyers usually are, they have checked off all their boxes. They cross their T's and dot their eyes. And Schneiderman gets his day in court. He's all over the newspaper. He's all over the, the media, and and then this will just Listen, you know fade. Every, as Sid just pointed out, he's a Democrat, of course. And New York State, a bastion of corruption. It took Breet, Breet Bahara to come in here and discover the uh, you know Sheldon Silver or the Skelos thing, the De Blasio corruption. This guy was like Sergeant Schultz. I know nothing. He's the <laughs> freaking Attorney General, and he's going after Trump. And all these guys are, are lining their pockets, going to jail, and he's standing by with his. He's doing. He's sleeping. What, what is this guy doing? Well, I will tell you, Sheldon Silver's case may get thrown out. Because the United States Supreme Court came down with a recent decision that's kind of on point with Sheldon Silver's case saying we, we don't think that what he did is actually a crime. But we can talk about that in another segment. Please. But, you you're know, this you're is, ruining this, my narrative. It, I apologize, sir. This is just another distraction for Trump. In other well, words, well, you know. You say distraction, but in, and again, I do think it's a big witch hunt and, and most of it is nonsense. But, but taking money from that charity to pay the Pam Bondi fine, that is illegal. That's not legal. Well, that's a little more than 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 uh, you know the, the witch hunt. And, that's and, illegal, right? So that that's what I'm saying. They are going to have to look at things, and they will go if there's a, if this is a true investigation, they will go through every single expense. It, they don't really care about the income uh, it, to some degree, but not much where the money is coming from. But they care 100 percent about where it's going to because there's a charter for not for profit, the Trump Foundation. This is what we're here to do. And, you know, if it went to Pam Bondi, if it went to somewhere where it's supposed to be coming out of Mr. Trump's own pocket and not the foundation's pocket, he will have a problem. Is he going to go to jail for that? No. no, no but no, could it, it, the foundation be subjected to some huge fines? Yes. All politically motivated to draw equivalents to the Clinton Foundation corruption, which is massive, which is humongous. This is peanuts compared to Agreed. that. And that's what it's all about. Agreed. We know that. Now, yeah. listen. Speaking of uh, things that are, are, are disgusting and despicable, uh, this Colin Kaepernick creep per perpetuating a falsehood out there that somehow the cops are, are engaged in shooting black males. He was uh, he, he takes knees during the national anthem. We all know that. After uh, Trent Dilfer c uh, criticized him, said as a uh, second string quarterback, right. he should just be quiet. After Monday night's game, he said the following. Take a listen. Colin, did you see Trent Dilfer's comments about you on Sunday? And if you did, what did you think about that? Uh, I just heard briefly about it, um, but I think that's one of the most ridiculous comments I've heard. The fact that you say, you know, you're a backup quarterback, stay in your place, that's an issue. I mean, to me, you're telling me that my position as a backup quarterback and being quiet is more important than people's lives. Right. No, I would ask him to really have a conversation with the families of people that have been murdered and see if he still feels that way because i bet you he doesn't just because he hasn't experienced that that type of oppression so i want this <laughs> nitwit to to be specific what the hell is he talking who is he talking about which police department is he talking about where justice was not done where the, the where the justice department isn't overseeing some, some investigation and having the final say on it what is he talking about? It's predicated on a falsehood. You have the black professor at Harvard, the economics professor, who did a study and showed that whites are more likely to be shot by cops once engaged. This guy, Professor Fryer, Although, I don't know if you heard about that. But to stop for one second, for one second, uh, the the comeback for that is going to be Bernard. Uh, percentage wise, there's a lot more whites than blacks, so of course more whites were shot. That's going to be their comeback. Just so you know. No, no, this was this was. Percentage-wise, it oh, takes okay. into account the. It's not disproportionate. In other gotcha. Words. Okay. So, so this takes that into account. Good. Well, let, let's just talk about how far we've come. Could you, you know, you had the promo on of Lawrence Taylor. Sid, could you imagine two or three players on Bill Parcells' team 
doing this. Never happened. <laughs> I mean, no, it would never happen. Hey, hey, you know, in the eighties, I mean, he would just kill them. He yes. would, he'd either cut them or, or uh, you know, or have not, Taylor. Not, not with the knife. Have Taylor go correct. Not but, with but, the knife. But or have Taylor this, go in and beat the heck out of them. You know this. In terms of of unions, there huh? is no more powerful correct. union than the NFL player union. They will squash you. But it's also the political correctness. It's not just the union. It's right. the political right. correctness. If a the, coach, the said, NFL's afraid. If the if if a coach said, "Fine, you want to kneel? You have every you have your First Amendment right. You could do whatever you could kneel." Don't think you're getting on that field, though. I, and I don't care but, if we lose the game. But, you're not getting on but that listen, field. But listen, let's say they were... They can't do that anymore. Let's no, say they can't. The let's coach say, would be thrown out of there. Uh, I mean, absolutely. it's insane. But what about the facts? The fact that uh, Kaepernick actually thinks that there, there's some sort of uh, epidemic of cops shooting young black males, and a lot of people do. And Hillary Clinton panders to the black community by saying that they has, do. What about the statistics that... <laughs> well, has anyone You accused, as a lawyer, you tell me. Has anyone accused Kaepernick of being some sort of mental giant? No, but everybody's, everybody's <laughs> right? acquiescing. I mean, he's, he's, he's just... He's no, feeding into the Al Sharpton, not just him. the Al Sharpton rhetoric, the the it's, the, it's, the, the myths, it's the, the lies. It's the NFL. It's it's all the commentators on, on TV and radio. They're all saying, "Yeah, he's got something to." Thanks for starting a discussion. Right. Well, what's the discussion about? Is what I want to know. Is there is this is there some form of injustice where the cops are racially motivated? They're going out there and they're shooting black males. And and what case in specific is he talking about? Uh, is it the Baltimore case? Is it the Eric Garner case where, where it's still being investigated by Attorney General Lynch, who is black? I, what is he talking about? I Look, I know we're supposed to have like a back and forth here, but I'm, I agree with you. And I, and here's the other thing. Let's just say that he had a viable topic, right? He, let's say he, he had a fact that was 100% in his favor. Is this really the best way to accomplish is it effective no. or has he turned more people off than he turned people on i was with the great juan williams last night talking to him the and, great juan williams yeah I, he's, I, a, he's a good guy i he think is very good. very highly of juan yeah. he's a very smart guy i actually guy. defended him grounded. this morning i thought bill o'reilly cut him off too much last night Go ahead, he's, I'm he's, sorry. he's a you know he's a grounded intelligent man and he, and he said if Kaepernick wants to make a point, is this the way to make it? Or should he reach into his pocket and say, I'm starting a million dollars, I'm putting my own million dollars into a foundation, and I am hiring this Harvard Law professor, and I'm hiring this Bill Bratton as the former police commissioner, and we're going to have a commission, and we're going to have a report, and we, you know, we're going to really address this issue, as opposed to, I'm going to keep all my money in my pocket and I'm just going to take a well, knee, and that's my big statement. Well, just, what does he accomplish? Just so you know, the great attorney, Arthur Idala, in studio with Bernie and Sid, I tweeted after this first thing happened, if you really care about the black community, take a million of your $100 million contract and build a school. Turns out he has done that. He has given money, at least a million dollars of his salary. But here's the problem with the whole discussion, which Bernard talks about. When I'm on Twitter or on Facebook or in person with somebody, and I'm talking to an African-American person, and I disagree with Colin Kaepernick, you know what they say to me? doesn't matter. You'll never know because you're white. You don't go through what I go through. Whether it's a guy making $143 million like Jesse Williams, a guy like Roland Martin on CNN, every black person I talk to that is pro Colin Kaepernick says to me, you have no right to opine on this because you don't go through what we go through every day. Now, police brutality may, may be one thing. He's talking specifically about shootings, black males being shot by cops, and statistics do not back him up. He's perpetuating a falsehood and also perpetuating the uh, the Ferguson effect, which is that cops will, are not being proactive, being proactive, and violence and murder is increasing in the in, inner cities. So it's actually poisonous what he's doing. It, 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 it's actually hurting the black community. Well, as I said, I don't I don't think it's having an effect. And if, if I'm wrong, if he has given money to the community, good for him. Who I will throw out props to is P. Diddy. He just started that school. He the took charter yes. school. Yes. Look, you know what? God bless him. And and if there's, you know, I've. I, I have refrained from beating up on President Obama because in his eight years, because on Fox, that's what you hear all the time. So I don't need to join the chorus. But if there's anything I hope he does outside of his presidency is exactly what Pete Diddy did. Because as a, an attorney who's in the criminal system, who goes into 120 Slimhorn Street, which is the Brooklyn criminal courthouse and 100 Center Street, which is the Manhattan criminal courthouse. Look. Bernie, you know, okay. there is, there's not a ton of white people let, let, in there. Let me there's tell a you. ton of black people in there. You. And there are young people who need mentors, who need guys. Yeah, like yeah. you said when we started the show right. about Sonia Sotomayor. Catholic schools. Having people who cared Private about school. her. That's right. People who mentored her. But I can we tell need you this. more of that out Arthur, there. Arthur, he'll, he'll, he'll go on Dancing with the Stars before he does that, President Obama. <laughs> They're in the pocket of the teachers' <laughs> unions. Funny. Hillary Clinton is of four square against charter schools and vouchers. That's Donald Trump's thing. That's what he brought well, up. Well, then let him come yeah. in and make the public schools better. Let him come in and get and do hand-to-hand 
like we're doing with the Ramos Foundation tomorrow, going into a school and sitting down and rolling up your sleeves and just hanging out and being like, hey, man, look what I did. Look where I went from rags to riches, so to speak. You yeah. guys can do this, too. Yeah, I, I, you know, And it's nice to look at Jay-Z as an example who was a crack dealer who became a millionaire. But, you know, you could go to Harvard and become the president of the United States without a silver spoon you know, in your right, mouth from, right, right. from jump. Hey, Arthur Idala, you're a great guest. God. A great, well, a great coming from you, you, coming from you. How Just many years have you been on the radio, Brian? Uh, well, 25 to 30, something like that. 25 with, with the to I-Man, 30. With the I-Man. Something like that. <laughs> Somewhere in hey, there. Hey, listen, yeah. uh, but you're, you're a consummate New Yorker, uh, a true success story. SUNY Purchase, uh, CUNY Law School. I hope my mom's Poly listening. Prep. Start with Polly Prep, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and a Brooklyn guy, still true to, to, true to his roots. I live on the same block. I learned how to ride a bicycle. Wow. Good luck that? with the... Uh, uh, my, my son is coming. I have one, and I got another one on the way. Thank God you, Mary Ann Bertuna, for making me a dad again. Arthur Idal on the Bernie and Sid Show on WABC Woo! back after this. Woo-hoo! 77 WABC Traffic and Transit. Accident in Nassau on the LIE westbound between the Jericho Turnpike and Glen Cove Road in the HOV and I just want to stay in the sun where I find I know it's hard sometimes Pieces of peace in the sun's peace of mind. What the hell is this? It's hard sometimes. Back on Bernie and Sid on 77 W. Right. T- t- turn it down, Mike. I can't take it. It's off. 21 pilots. Take it down. Awesome. They're Jesus. awful. I know they're popular now, but they stink. They're so Let's good. Stop. You see, whatever's on in. channel 10, 11, or 12 on XM Sirius, whatever her daughter is listening to, like that's my what, kids. That, that's stop not this do, show. Stop doing that. Right. Our oh, listeners, whoa, whoa. Uh, we don't want to hear what, are. what your daughter, who's in the right. seventh grade, is listening to. This is not Elvis Duran. On this show. Sid, Ava loves the song, I guarantee right, you. Right, but, but, but Ava will listen to Elvis Duran I'm, right now, not us. I'm begging He's you. not on right now. This He's is on not the, the Disney Channel. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> don't be afraid to play some white man classic rock or some 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 <laughs> classic, uh, you know, like... Some classic uh, hip-hop. Right. The, 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 can't be we playing can all 21 pilots. Some upbeat. I told you a couple songs. Bernie, do you like Sia? I told you a couple of songs this morning. Yeah, that's you, you should have played they're, it. They're both. They're both top. This is 40. not. This is not. This is that wasn't so no good. That wasn't the work. cheap. That wasn't cheap thrills. That's what. That's what we were. talking I love about. that song, Cheap Thrills. Right. That's what I told her to get this morning. We already that's played what, it. That's with uh, Sean. Um, it's Sia with, um, with Big 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 Sean. Big Sean. There you go. <laughs> that's a great song. But that that's also top forty. That, that I, yeah, but that's different. But that, that's why I told you to play it, but not the do- the song your daughter is obsessing <laughs> over. She's also uh, obsessed uh, with. That song. Oh, <laughs> just you know. What you, are you gonna do, Bernie? What are you gonna you, do? You're gonna be out at that golf course uh, <laughs> next Wednesday. Oh yeah. And uh, you're gonna be there too. <laughs> you're gonna get a <laughs> golf club across the uh, temple. Okay, who's making it back from the golf course? Is what I want to know. Well, right. All right, listen. Let's get serious. Uh, Ivanka Trump. Yeah. She was uh, out with Daddy last night on the stump. I saw it. And uh, they had this big policy proposal of maternity maternity leave. Fine. Say that fast, quickly. Maternity leave. Yeah, six weeks you can't uh, say maternity it, can leave. Six right. weeks That's uh, right. you'd be paid for, which, of course, right now there's no legally, you, you don't have to be paid. Most companies do, but there's no legal uh, basis behind that. And uh, he also had some uh, some tax breaks. and So it's a beautiful thing. It was a good. It was very unrepublican, by the way, but, but right. pretty good. Pretty well, good. It's, it's, you know, he's, he's reaching out. And Trump today, by the way, is going to Flint, Michigan. I saw that, which they're not happy about. The, the, the folks in Flint, Michigan don't want him there. You, you, when you say the folks, you generalize. No, I'm not. Yeah, yes, you are. I'm um, I'm not generalizing. Well, yeah, I am generalizing. You're right. In terms of the majority, you know, you're right. Right. The majority don't want him there. Not every uh, single person. Apparently. But he's reaching out, and uh, that's, but, a, but that's he, a good he, thing. But even his daughter last night lied. He, he, I, thought he, I thought he did was good. I'm all for maternity leave pay, obviously. So are you. We've got kids. But for Ivanka to say Hillary has no plan is just stupid. Of course she's got a plan. Well, she's had a plan forever. Of, Ivanka says uh, there's no plan on the website. She says that's, she has that's a plan. Not, that's not true that's either. That's what she the, said. Well, she's wrong. Okay, anyway, she was on with Megyn Kelly last night. Was Ivanka Trump, uh, or whatever her name is now. Uh, Ivanka, <laughs> what is her last name? She's married to the guy who runs the Observer, the uh, Orthodox Schwartz. Jew. Schwartz. Ivanka Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> that's her name? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Rosenbush. <laughs> right. Ivanka Rosenbush. Let's go with that. Kushner. Oh, Kushner. Right. Kushner. Oh, that is okay. right. That's right. She was on with uh, <laughs> Megyn Kelly last night, who asked her the following. Take a listen. 
Now, I want to ask you about women while I have you here. Obviously, your dad's had some trouble with them, and clearly he's made some comments about women. I've always wondered how you reacted to that, you know, like to the retweet of Heidi Cruz next to Milan. Give us a flavor as to how those events affected you. Well, my father can be an equal opportunity offender. <laughs> if somebody says something against him, he will speak his mind, and he treats women equal to how he treats men. Mm -hmm. But I think the fact that he doesn't treat us differently or with kit gloves shows the fact that he recognizes we're equipped to handle it and and are able to do so so there you have it Trump good answer is the ultimate feminist he treats women and men alike he doesn't treat women as delicate little flowers if they want to get in the ring with him and fight he'll fight with them as though they were a guy what why do you say gender that? Like, it's equality a good thing though they it's a beauty he's a feminist no, it's not that's a, yes it's, it, you no, treat you treat women equally no. that's that's the, that's the 21st century way she answered who, that question but that? here's the question said yeah. rosenberg by the way i don't agree with that i think that well, yes while that uh, women obviously have the same jobs and all that stuff is terrific and yeah yeah we're running for president i do believe you treat women differently than men that's what right up, okay. one place where i think donald trump is an, is an animal to be honest okay with pull your knuckles up from the ground no, and that's uh, not knuckles answer up. this question Yes. Why is it that it's okay to ask uh, Donald Trump's kids about his behavior towards women, but nobody ever, and we talked about this on the Iverson Morning Show this morning, they never asked Chelsea Clinton about Bill Clinton's treatment of women, the alleged rapes, the sexual assaults, yeah, yeah. the affairs. The fact that the mom bullied uh, a lot of these women. Right. Those questions, if you do that, it's like, oh, my God, the kids are supposed to be off limits. And, uh, why is it that Chelsea Clinton never gets asked that question, and yet Megyn Kelly, uh, Nora O'Donnell on CBS and various venues, they pepper poor Ivanka with that question well, right. all the time? It's not right. Uh, What's they, up they with sh that? They should ask Chelsea the same. I, I totally agree. Now, look, the, the, the point is, is that because of the way Donald Trump acts – the barbaric animal way that he acts, they expect that his daughter will be prepared to handle those questions. Right. Which she did, by the way, in, in excellent fashion. Credit right, exactly. to Ivanka. Sure. But if you're asking, should both daughters be treated the same way, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah. You, you got to ask, you got to ask Chelsea the tough questions. 1 800 848 9222. Bernie and Sid. <laughs> you are such a son right, of listen, a bitch. Uh, the, you really are. Just... I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. I, mean, <laughs> I know why you're dead the serious. The media, they're a bunch of scum. They're scum skunks. I, I, that is it's such a double standard, so glaring. Oh my God! Don't you dare ask Chelsea that question. Who would ask? She, and Chelsea's all over the place. Who would else? Who would ask Chelsea that question in the media? In other words, you know anybody. CNN's not going to do it. No, I they don't would. Care. Charlie Rose, Matt Lauer, any any of these. these do you these, think they would? I, they haven't so far. No, they have not. Well, my and, question to you is, knowing how the media is biased, and I agree that it is. I do agree with that. Knowing CNN is not going to do it. MSNBC is not going but, to do it. Who would do it? Would I, Bill O'Reilly do it? Would O'Reilly bring Chelsea no, Bill, on? Bill as a matter of fact, Mr. Imus asked uh, Bill O'Reilly this morning, would you do that? Do, do we have that? Uh, we may have that. Yes. I'll tell we you do what. Have it. How long is it? I want to hear this. All right, go I ahead. I want to hear O'Reilly's like response. Cut 20. Cut 20. I asked uh, Ivanka Trump about the behavior of her father with women, though to my knowledge, no one has ever asked Chelsea Clinton that. My question for you is, do you think it's fair to ask either one of them? No. Children are a different thing, so I, I wouldn't ask that question because you put a child in a position where most children love their parents and they know their parents are not perfect people. As a journalist, your primary responsibility is to the audience. So is that going to further the audience's understanding of the candidate to get their children in a very embarrassing position. No, it's not. And I, yeah. and I say no. Okay. I, I don't think that's going to help the audiences make up their mind one way or the other. See, that's my point. Like, I, I don't think you could find one person that would ask that and, question. And yet Megyn Kelly asked it last night. But it's a little more serious. And, uh, nor, and CBS uh, uh, this morning asked uh, Ivanka Trump once. They peppered. Uh, but, 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 but you would agree that calling Rosie O'Donnell, let's say, a fat pig, while some deem that sexist and misogynist, that's not nearly as severe or as tricky as saying your dad has been accused of rape. You would, could say you your agree? dad has been accused of some misconduct. You could you could soften yeah. the language. However, th but, but th th in other words, the conduct that Bill Clinton allegedly displayed was 20 times worse than anything Donald Trump said. It's, it's always w what the Clintons did and what Donald Trump said. And by the way, Trump with the Rosie O'Donnell thing, he was defending himself.
She attacked him first because he decided to allow a Miss America pageant to stay it's in the pageant. It's not just Rosie O'Donnell. He, uh, I, I, he's I know. Got a history you brought her up. Stern uh, you and br- all the you, br- you brought her up. Right. He he he, so he he was like us when he goes on Howard Stern. We right. we, we do and say things as entertainers. Okay. And so, so, I'm not it, knocking it, him. I'm telling you what the media knock is. But you know who won't ask? Uh, I, 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 excuse me, Chelsea Clinton. Any of these questions is Chris Matthews. I guarantee it. <laughs> Chris Matthews last night, you missed a thrill up his leg of eight, eight years ago whenever Obama gave a speech. Yes. Remember that? Yes. The, the, he had the, the jingle up his leg. What was it? The, the tingle up his leg. He uh, he had it again last night, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, President Obama was down in uh, <laughs> he was down in Philadelphia where it was where it was a torrid 80 degrees. He was out there with his uh, shirt sleeves rolled up, campaigning for uh, Hillary. Made a very and, nice speech. And Chris Matthews, while he barely could keep it in his shorts. Take a listen. <laughs> and a clear sign the president knows how to do it, he chose Pennsylvania today as the place he would plant his stake in Donald Trump's heart. He went there today in the 80-degree heat to rouse Philadelphians in the same way he did in getting himself elected in 08 and 12. He's not offering any real policies or plans, just offering division and offering fear. And he's betting that if he scares enough people, he might just scare up enough votes to win this election. There are words in that speech that are magical to the political ear. <laughs> words that are magical <laughs> to the political <laughs> ear. He had to change his shorts, uh, I guarantee he you. He was good, though. Segment. Obama was good. Come on, give him credit. He let's, was good. Let's go to James from Long Island. James, you're on with Bernie and Sid on WABC. Good morning, James. Good morning, guys. How are you? Hey there. You know. <laughs> Listen, Sid, I just wanted to say... Women don't want to be treated differently nowadays. James, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Listen, listen, James. My wife is an attorney. Let the guy Hold talk. on. No, 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 no. I'm not going to. James, 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 James. Maybe the women that you come into contact with feel that way. My wife's an attorney, makes a six figure living. She wants me, she still wants me to be a gentleman, not talk a certain way. combat, Sid. I understand that. Go into combat. Well, I, listen, I, I get. James, you're wrong. I, I get, you're a thousand percent I, I, wrong. I, I, I get thousand percent wrong. James, I stupid. Wrong. I get what you're saying, James. Uh, excuse me, Sid. And I want to let James finish. James, stay there. But I get what you're saying, Sid. Exactly. But in this day and age, stupid. political correctness calls for the people. Hillary Clinton's forces call for gender equality. I understand. And if you don't that. exercise gender equality, you're a sexist pig. Which is so wrong which, too. So which, which is which, it? Which is wrong too. Which so which is what, it? What it is is, is that you've got to find a way, you've got to find a way to treat women with the proper respect, but at the same time to say they want to be treated equally, well, stop opening doors, to, uh, talk to them the way you talk to a man, is so stupid. Well, then, it's then, not worth then, discussing. Then, then vote for Trump. They do. They do, Sid. It's the, it's the fact. They James, that's your opinion. Men. That's, that's your that's opinion. That's their opinion. That, no, my, my, yes, I made right. it very clear. My opinion is, my opinion is women want to be treated like women, like they've been treated forever. Men weren't fighting to let the women in the military. It was the women fighting. Enough with the military, James. Okay, so, so, enough with the military. I so got it, you, the military. So if you want, if you want to, women to be treated differently... Uh, then vote. Don't vote for Hillary Clinton because she's the, part of the, the mentality that says all women should be treated the same. That's fine, but but don't tell me that and women that, that, that women want to be treated the same way men treat men. That is beyond stupid. That, that's, of course not. That's that's uh, the people you're supporting in, in this election are for that. I, I get that. We do like okay. the doors being held open. For yes, us. of course. One eight hundred eight four eight. Of course you do. Nine two two two. Bernie and Sid stupid. back after this. <laughs> Seventy seven W. Back on the Bernie and Sid show on 77 WABC on a glorious hump day. Hump day or Trump day? Both. 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 That's right. I got to run home today and watch uh, Dr. Oz. Going to watch Donald Trump on Dr. Oz. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, there's a couple of people out there actually to use again. And I I use these words facetiously. And when I talk about gender equality, Right. Believe me, I'm being facetious. Uh, I'm just trying to make a point with the the hypocrisy and the double right, right. standards. I mean, you would you would be stupid you, you idiot. wouldn't be dumb enough to make the phone call that last call I made and say that women want to be well, treated. Well, he's making a point too. He understands. He's he, stupid. The women that you hear on on TV, the women that are shoving this crap down your throat, 
They're, they're the people with the double standards. They, they well, want he's not talking about that. The last caller really believes women want to be treated the way men treat men, which, by the way, I don't care how much we've evolved or what opportunity women get. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, yeah, but that's the, that's what the force, the PC forces want. That's what they say they want. If, if that's what you want, that's what you get. But they don't really want it. If I you, know they say it, but I'm telling you, well, if you th- can't, they're guilty of hypocrisy. Well, you can't scream sexist all the time huh? if uh, somebody attacks you and, and, you, and you're screaming for gender equality, I but then you. they attack you and you I say, no, they're sexist. And so we were talking about why does uh, Chelsea Clinton not get any questions uh, about her father's behavior while Ivanka Trump, as she did last night on Megyn Kelly show, is constantly peppered about her 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 father's uh, behavior or not what he did, but what he said. Right. And uh, so Rebecca from New Jersey, around with Bernie and Sid on WABC. Good morning, Rebecca. Uh, yes. So my question is, why should she be asked about? bill clinton when he's not the one that's running for president the one that's running for president is her mother so why is this even relevant fair point well he it's relevant because you get two for the price of one (laughs) as they as they said as they have said in the past he will be the first lady essentially in the office and he's out there campaigning he's an active campaigner so it's fair, but, uh, but it's it's fair game. Not but only also, that, not only that. Don't forget, he's campaigning. That's one thing. He's a husband. He's he has political experience. She did actually say, "Quote Hillary, he's going to play a major part in trying to revive the economy." And, and, and he's that, got a job. That's exactly right. And and, and in addition to that, she uh, she bullied his victims, and that's why. Chelsea should be. If you're going to ask Ivanka, which, which again, maybe I agree with Bill O'Reilly, nobody, the, the kid should be off limits. But if you're going to ask Ivanka, you should ask Chelsea, Rebecca. Well, but she is also actively campaigning, so I think it's a fair question to ask her about her father. Well, the, then tell you tell me why does what then why doesn't Chelsea be asked about? Well, here's it? A, after what the, I just laid out. But what she just said because uh, Chelsea Chelsea is the kid in this. She's not campaigning. No, nope. Ivanka's I'll tell you got why. a job for because Donald they're Trump. Democrats and the the, the media's in the tank for Hillary. That's, that's why. That's, that's the true. answer. But but that is true. But in all seriousness, the, Ivanka's got a job with Donald Trump. Chelsea's not not going to get a job. She, with Hillary. She works for the Clinton Global Foundation, and there's actually been talk if Hillary drops out to make Chelsea put Chelsea. No, but in. he's already said that Ivanka's going to be part of his cabinet. There is no talk Please, of Chelsea listen, being it's, part it's, of Hillary's. It's cabinet. all about you know. It's about well, double I standards. That. I know that, and, and about the media covering up. And uh, of course, kids were always off limits. But they, they asked uh, even right now. Right now, you have, uh, and I, I don't even want to bring this up. You have Obama's daughters were in the news a little bit. I saw that, but they, and rightfully so, the media is staying away from it, and I agree with that. But they didn't with the Bush daughters back in uh, 2005. And it was kind of the same thing. They were drunk, had some that's weed. That's right, <laughs> exactly. So, so that's the point. The media bias, and we, by the way, I have coming up, and thank you for the call, Rebecca. Thank you. On Bernie and Sid, I have tape of CBS editing out uh, Charlie Rose editing some stuff that uh, Bill Clinton said. Which is absolutely. I did. Listen to her. She yeah, she's still she's still on there. Oh, uh, you should have left it there. What, what, what Bill Clinton said about what Bill Clinton said about Hillary's uh, fainting spells. Uh, but just the the way CBS edited it out, you're going to hear it. You're going to. It's on display. Gonna, is it Charlie Stone Ro- Cold busted. It's Charlie Rose. Charlie yes. Rose. Because I like Charlie Rose. And we have uh, Hillary supporters. Surrogates. In fact, uh, Obama's former campaign manager fat shaming Donald Trump to use their language. Well, this goes back to the whole medical issue, which, which again, I, I, I got to take Donald Trump's side on this, or at least the supporters in that but, he's not the guy fainting, fainting in front of a billion people on Sunday at the right. 9/11 ceremony. He, as far as I can see, he seems healthy. Doesn't mean he is. But if you're, if you're Hillary Clinton and your people are bitching and complaining, why you bother me, not Donald Trump, he's not the one fainting in public. I have some good tape coming up, you know? Sid Rosenberg, on the Bernie and Sid Show, 1-800-848-9222, after Gnome with the News. 77 WABC. WABC, where New York comes to talk. 77 WABC. The doctor, who just last week went on Russian state television to talk down our military and to curry favor with Vladimir Putin. He loves this guy. And and when the interviewer asked him, well, why why do you support this guy? He's a strong guy. Look, he's got an 82% poll rating. Well, yes, so Saddam Hussein had a 90% poll rating. I, I mean, if you control the media and you've taken away everybody's civil liberties and you jail dissidents, 
That's what happens. You know, if the pollster calls you up and says, do you support the guy who, if you don't support him, he might throw you in jail. Oh, you up. say yes. I love that guy. Yeah, speaking of controlling oh, the he's media. Right, though. And Putin of, doesn't throw you in jail. He kills you. Well, let's just say that Obama the, may be a hypocrite, the, but the left controls the media here, uh, listen, and his approval ratings are uh, pushing sixty percent. So I, I, maybe there, there's a correlation. There is some proof in what you just said, but 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 you can't be liking Pu- uh, Putin. You just can't. Don't give me the nonsense. Listen, We're going uh, to beat, okay. beat ISIS right. together. Let, just stop. Let me just say that the hypocrisy once again. That's fine. Let me just point that out. Before the election, fine. 2012 election, he said. To uh, the foreign minister, don't worry. After the election, we'll, we'll be a little more flexible. Right. Remember, he said right. that. I he, do remember he that. He said yes. that to. Uh, so, listen, the the, the Putin thing, uh, FDR aligned with Stalin back in World War II to defeat defeat the Nazis. Right. And All right. How'd that so, go? It went well. It did. We defeated the Nazis. Yeah, after six million we, of my people died, and and but a lot of them <laughs> were saved because we did. That. Not a lot. And, well, okay, but listen, <laughs> they, wh- whoever was saved, right. they were glad that we aligned with Stalin because just stop it. The Russians are our enemies. That's just FDR. the way it is. The Ru- yeah, FDR. Hillary right. started her campaign on Roosevelt Island because of the symbolism of FDR and uh, Eleanor. That's why, where she started. I, I understand. And FDR allied himself with Stalin. I'm not an FDR fan. He called fan. him Uncle Joe. I'm not an FDR fan. Okay, so so we are allied. Uh, Trump wants to ally himself with Stalin, uh, excuse me, with Putin. Right. Maybe so we can build ISIS. hotels in Moscow. Maybe right. sure. to defeat right. ISIS. So we can build some hotels Look, in if Moscow. It, if it works out for America, if it helps us out, let's do it. No, no more Mr. Nice See, guy. here's the thing. It's all about America he, he, first these he, days. He, no, Nobody it, appreciates it, it, crap. It's about Donald Trump first. And if, by the way, it just so happens that it helps out America, that's the icing on the cake. But it's about Donald helping Donald, and if it doesn't help out America, well, well no, his I, heart was in the right place. I think tr- he's so narcissistic that he knows he wants a good legacy. So if it helps out this country, it will help Donald out. So, yes, the two go hand in hand. So uh, allying ourselves with, uh, with the Putin enemy. might the help. Enemy. It, it, look, if it, takes, it helps us take out ISIS, let's do it. Let us sure. do it. Okay. Hey, listen, speaking of the media, yeah. uh, Bill Clinton was sat down with Charlie Rose. They had that big interview. And Bill was talking about, you know, Hillary feels better and all this. And, but anyway, CBS edited some crap out. So listen, listen to this exchange about her fainting spells in the past. Listen to him say, rarely. And before that, you don't hear frequently in this cut. This is the edited version. Take a listen. If it's not more serious no, no, she, than dehydration. She's then. been... Uh, well, if it is, it's a mystery to me and all of her doctors. Rarely, but on more than one occasion. Rarely. Over the last many, many years, the same sort of things happened to her. There you go. Rarely, right? Right. That's, that's the right. version that aired on CBS. Right. All day long on CBS yeah. News, CBS This Morning. So even, even, L- listen, even though it didn't happen often, he did make the point that it has he, happened he just before. Said it, rarely. Right. right? So right. listen to the unedited <laughs> version. If it's not more serious no, no, she, than dehydration. She's then. been... Uh, well, if it is, it's a mystery to me and all of her doctors, because it's frequently, frequently. Well, not frequently, that's not it, rarely, but on more than one occasion over the last many, many years, the same sort of things happened to her. How do you like well, that? He, but he, he corrected him. Busted. No, but he corrected no, himself I know he did. There. I know he did. He but went he, from but, frequently to rarely. But he may have inadvertently uttered the truth. He may have. With the frequently comment, it's possible. Yeah. It, it should be left for the audience to decide. CBS tried to help him out, help her out, yeah. by editing that that's out. That's not right. And that's a blatant uh, 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 example, right? She's pissed? Stone cold busted. You think she's pissed? I don't I, I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm <laughs> pissed at that, that. No, but, but uh, I know you're pissed at CBS, but you think she gets mad? Like, like why would you say frequently, I don't know. Idiot? I don't care. It's too bad. Do you think they fight? Like, the, like, like he's. Yeah, of course no, they no, fight. No, but I'm being serious. Kidding me? He's humiliated her so much. Of, yes. And done so many things. Do you think Are at you, this point they even fight? He, you know, he's walking around when she's there. He's got his hands in his pocket. He's looking down. He's saying, "I'm so sorry, Hillary. I didn't mean any of it. You know, we're gonna get you in that White House. I'm gonna make it all up." But then you. he says something oh, stupid. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> okay, I'll just go in the room here and uh, I'll put on some. I'll put on Sports Night or whatever the hell. <laughs> yeah, get out of my face. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean it. Okay. You think that's how it goes? How's the grandkids? Do you know? (laughs) Oh, shut the hell up. You don't care. You and your bitches. 
Uh, okay, I'll go take a walk. Yeah, to see your Energizer Bunny. <laughs> no, I was just going to walk down the block. I was just going to, okay, I don't know what to do. So anyway, uh, do oh, they fight? Are you kidding? Him. Are you ki- Do they fight? All right, oh, my do, God. Do they do the, do they do the other F word? Not fight, but... <laughs> fart, <on>. yes. <laughs> I'm asking, do you believe, seriously, Nicely they, 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 they Let's really... Let's leave it at fart. Okay. All right, that was... That was a, I, I mean, you know, does, is, is Stephen Hawking uh, doing that? I mean, give me a yes. break. By the way, yes. Please. The answer is yes. So yesterday, a couple of uh, Hillary Clinton supporters, the... Uh, the outgoing Senator Harry Reid, the Democratic min- minority him. leader, he's right. a little a weasel schmuck. He tried to shut down all of my buddy Dennis Hoff's brothels in Las Vegas, and uh, ever since then he's lost me. Why? Because he, he caught a disease at one of them? <laughs> don't, don't make fun of Dennis Hoff. He's off I'm not. He, but it happened. Harry yeah. Reid is, uh, is one of those guys against prostitution, and he has gone oh, out there oh, and yeah. actively tried to shut down Dennis's places, oh, even though Dennis's places are in places that where prostitution is legal, where it's not, of course, in Las Vegas. So all this talk is about uh, Trump, you know, Hillary's health and now Trump's health. And as you said, the onus is on her because she's the one yes. with the, the history. Yes. Of pro- this guy's speaking of the Energizer Bunny. He he won't stop. He's all over the place. This guy's robust and he's 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 totally energized. And uh, so Harry Reid and this guy David Pluff, yeah. who used to yeah. be Obama's campaign manager, they were out on TV yesterday talking. Uh, take a listen to both of them. So here's Trump, who uh, you know, Doctor Feelgood put out a one-page letter. He's seventy. Okay. All right, stop uh, he's it after the heaviest this one. president we've had a candidate uh, since William Taft. Since William Taft. See, that was going to be the punchline. We're going to play Harry Reid first. And then end with Pluff, and then the punchline would be he's as fat as uh, William Howard Taft. But uh, we didn't get to that, so we just stopped it there. And trust me, Harry Reid said that uh, Trump's eating fast food, and he's mm-hmm. a fat slob, mm-hmm. and he's flabby, and all that stuff. So uh, now, again, with the hip- hypocrisy, the people on the left, they're not supposed to, you, they say you're not supposed to fat shame or body shame people. So uh, I would, and, and they want gender equality. So now they're forcing me to maybe look at Hillary Clinton and say, is she maybe fat? Is she overweight? Is she is she almost as big as William Howard Taft? And would I be sexist sexist if I did not point that out? You see my dilemma? No, I, I, not really, no. <laughs> I, I do on on a very on a very. You see, they're putting me in a box. On a, I, I'm going to have to say she has a fat ass, or I'm I'm sexist. <laughs> on a very intellectual basis, I you're, see you're, your dilemma. You're feeling me, right? I do. But uh, from a a humanity man woman societal standpoint. I don't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, uh, j- f- flirty, farty <laughs> flipper. Uh, who should we go to, Gary or Jim? Uh, let's go to Jim. Jim from Jersey, Ronald Bernie and Sid on WABC. Good morning, Jim. How you doing, boys? Hey, Jimmy. So, so listen, to talk about hypocrisy, because they're trying to divert all the attention away from the ISIS uh, terror uh, uh, guys and make it Putin out to be this, uh, the, uh, whatever he is. But if you remember back when he was running against Mitt Romney, Obama, they had a debate. Romney said to Mose how the biggest threat is Russia and Vladimir Putin. And Obama made him look like a jerk and said the Cold War ended 50 years ago, whatever it was, and the media destroyed Romney on it. You're absolutely now, right. That is true. Yeah, now is all true. of a sudden, uh, Russia is the biggest threat. We need, they need to take over, federalize the voting booths because Russia's hacking everybody. That's why the NC is claiming they've been hacked again, because they want to take over the voting machine. Excellent recall, Jim. The, the, no, that again, is true. The hypocrisy and the revisionism on, on display by the Democrats and the people you're voting for, uh, by the I, way. I am voting for them. And, 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 and I disagree. I think that Putin is a bad guy. Very, the guy, guy in line one, why is he a bad guy? I mean, you know, we, we, it's, been, it's been told over and over again what he does to his people, what he does to but his journalists again, so over did, so and over So did Saddam, again. Saddam Hussein. Well, Saddam killed, wasn't a bad but guy. Let me finish. Saddam Hussein killed his own people. Right. right? But I don't care. It's none of our business. He kept the terrorists and the savages at bay. And, then, and listen to me. Listen to what happened. We sent over four to five. I mean, we sent over tens of thousands of troops. Yes. Almost 5,000 died. 
And then what happened after that? They didn't appreciate no, it. No, but you're missing my they, point. No, well, let me finish. Uh, no, I, I, listen. They I'm, did not appreciate I it. I get so it. Saddam Hussein, yes, he was a bad guy. Right. But it was in our interest to leave to him leave there. To leave him there. I'm not saying take Putin out. And maybe, saying, and maybe work with him no, against no, Iran. Work, stop. Don't work uh, with against him. Against Iran. I'm not saying take against Putin. Against ISIS. I'm not saying take Putin out, obviously, because you could give me five examples from Egypt to Iraq to Libya. Well, leaving that guy in place was the better right. move. But don't buddy up and say the guy's a good guy or I like the guy. I, I, Trump when never the guy said he was a good guy. Never said he was a good guy. Never said that. Said I'd work with him, and it wouldn't be great if we got along with Putin. You don't work with that guy. You let's go. Don't let, work let's with go, that let's guy. go to Gary from uh, Hackensack, New Jersey. Gary, you're on with Bernie and Sid. Good morning. You know, Sid, it's easy to throw out slander, but I want you to give me specific evidence that Vladimir Putin, Vladimir the Great, is this villain. You're going to say he kills journalists? Give me proof. You're going to say he's uh, tampering with elections? Give me... Gary, proof. Gary, I don't got to give you anything. Go on and read it for yourself, because if you don't oh, believe oh, the countless York articles York. on it, I'm going to recite what I've read. That's crap. The New York That's York. crap. It's all lies. Okay. But, look. Let's take Crimea, for example. 75% of the people in Crimea are ethnic Russians. 95% of the people wanted to return right. to Russia. Right. Okay? No. And the propaganda media made it sound like there was this big invasion. No, there's a, there was no There was invasion. no big... There was no invasion? No, no. Uh, there was. Now, the listen. People oh, stop. voted Gary, 97% stop. to stop. return to Russia. That's Gary, right. Gary, you make a good point. And I'll tell you, when people will come back and say that Hitler said the same thing about certain uh, lands that he annexed. But still... The, the fact is that uh, people in Crimea wanted the Russian government there. And why he goes into Ukraine, I don't care. It's none of our business. Okay, do you want your no, son to die for Ukraine? No, but I'm make, that's not the point. Don't tell me Putin's not a bad guy. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. And he might not be a, bit, he might oh, not be a good stop. guy. I don't care. I don't care if he is Well, I not. do care in terms well, of don't buddy up with the guy. If it helps our country, it's not helping us buddy stop. up. Bernie, hey, Sid, man. <laughs> you are funny. <laughs> Sid and I are going to go, uh, we're going to go punch somebody. Have a beer out. with Putin. No, no, yeah. we don't. We, we, the, the thing is, 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 uh, we don't want to care that much, do we? No. <laughs> we really not. <laughs> Who, who's playing tonight? Is anybody? The Mets. Go, let's go Mets. Mets Bernie and, and Nats and Yankees and Dodgers. Back after this. 77 WAB.